Good evening, good evening, Cape Flight Stories. Hope you guys are good. Hope it's going good with you. Normally we do politics, but tonight we're going to do other type of politics, football, a local football. Of your soccer news, yeah, football. So I've got a few gentlemen with me in the studio. Um, I'm a famous, and then I'll have to self-introduce. And we're going to talk about the challenges and, and the issues um, and also the good things that uh, football contributes to our communities. So what in the studio I have on this side, this Kirtley, eh? Yes. Kirtley, how are you, sir? I'm doing well in yourself. I'm good, I'm good. Tell us more about yourself. I know you have won recently. You have a trophy won. Tell us more about you. Yes, I come from, I represent the club Crossy Park United. We play out of Cape District. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm recently married as well. I'm married to a beautiful wife, Summer. Mm-hmm. I come from a small family. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a small family. Um, my dad, my mom, my sister. Mm-hmm. And I'm married into a big family. So, awesome. yeah. Mm, recently married and football is my life. Football is your life. Okay. Yeah. We're going to come now back to you um, on a few questions. And over here, many of you might know him. He's got his own show as well. Um, Samuel, how are you, sir? I'm good, thanks, Dan, and you? Good, good. Welcome, good. and um, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, hi there. My name is Shamil Dalvi. I run a, a football website and Facebook page called uh, The Fourth Moment, where we highlight uh, grassroots football. Mm-hmm. We're involved in football development, uh, player mentoring, co- coaching mentoring, and yeah, we just highlight local football grassroots level. Awesome, awesome. And we'll talk more about that in the next couple of minutes. And then I've got a very famous man here. He plays soccer. <laughs> I posted about him a couple of weeks back, um, Tariq Filisi. He's not no stranger to you guys. So Tariq, welcome and just tell us more about yourself. Ja, daar ik veel is. Sinte bij Kofkeit en City en ja. Awesome, awesome. That's me. I'm going to start with you. Daar ik weet het zoeken start voor jou. What inspired you? I mean, you you grew up and like all of us, we have challenges. But where did your story start? Okay, I started at a uh, club, uh, Salt River Blackpool. Mm-hmm. You know, growing up, uh, you just enjoy football with your friends. So mm-hmm. every day looking forward to mm-hmm. just playing and as I got older, I, I realized that uh, mm-hmm. it was actually a passion that I, that I love. And yeah. just started working more on myself mm-hmm. and told myself that uh, mm-hmm. this is what I want to be one day. And awesome. yeah, I'm still yeah. going. And you're amazing. I saw some of your games. Mm. <laughs> 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 but we're going to come back to you now. now. <laughs> Young man, where did soccer start for you? What got you into soccer? Because all of us at one stage, believe it or not, I also played soccer many years ago. <laughs> and, 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 I started, and I stopped <laughs> many years ago. Back in the day, it was two teams here. It was Crusaders and Milano. So I knew the, the young lady, um, Mr. Mr. Apple's daughter, because we went to school together. And she would always tell me, nah, go and then I would play with him. You know, that time, uh, they, were, they were just up and coming. But I mean, soccer was quite big in Karachi Park, and it is still. But where did your journey start? So my journey started, I was a young boy, I played at Blue Balls, mm-hmm. um, under nine. And then I had a, a football journey, literally, mm-hmm. I went from Blue Balls to Mr. Price Parkers Academy. Yeah. Then I recently, then I joined, I escaped down then, which Cape Town was now. Yeah. Played there for a bit, for four years, got released. Mm-hmm. That's part of the journey of football, when you get into a meeting and they say, my oh boy, we're not signing, we're not yeah. renewing the contract. But that's just part of, partial of who what makes you and, and what you become mm-hmm. out of it and that's part of it. Mm-hmm. And then I went into Old Mutual Academy. Yeah. From Old Mutual Academy, I went into Hellenic. And then the coaching journey started. I went into it. I had a, a bad knee injury, mm-hmm. uh, tore my ACL and I didn't recover well from it. Yeah. And then I went into coaching. Mm-hmm. And my coaching journey started first at the school, mm-hmm. Berkeley the High School. And then I went into Reichersdal. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, it's a football journey. Okay. <laughs> and then from Regis now, I joined the Lenik, mm-hmm. back into coaching, coaching under 18. And then I got an offer to come into Grassy Park mm-hmm. last season, November. And then I joined the Vodacom team, the ABC Motsepe team awesome. at Grassy Park. Mm-hmm. And that is where I'm at now at the moment. You you mentioned something, and I think that is the, is the fear of many of our boys is when they don't sign you. And some of our boys give up. They don't go back anymore. What what motivated you to go back? Because you're also not mentioning you adapted the role of a coach as well. So now what you've learned over the years, now you're implementing that and, and you're teaching other young people. So what kept you going? What made you go back? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I said, I don't even want to say anything. I had to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I feel that is also a family. Mm-hmm. Family, your beliefs, mm-hmm. God, 
your foundations. Yeah. That has to be strong first. Yeah. Your character, you can't be, you have to be bold. Yeah. And and like you say, rejection is part of life. That's yeah. a life journey. It's not just football, yeah. but it's also how you take it. What What is your bounce back? Mm-hmm. What are you going to throw in the towel? Like you said, mm-hmm. my friend got signed. Why not me? I'm better than him. Why not? You ask a lot of questions and you're right. You should ask yourself. Yeah. But then you have to say, hey, how do I make a difference? How do I bounce back? What is this isn't the end of me? Mm-hmm. And I always tell players when you when you go to the best academies, that's part of it. Yeah. You're not always going to shine. And there comes a time that your time has come to an end where you have to go to a new path. Yeah. But it's what you make out of it and, and how big is your dream. Because mm-hmm. you still need to develop, you still need to go touch yeah. another soul. Mm. And that is important, your your confidence in your in yourself, in your own ability. Yeah. And that is where part and partial of what mm. what drove me yeah. into coaching, into bouncing back. I always said, Kurtley, you're better than this, man. Kurtley, mm. go on, go achieve your dreams. Yeah. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. That's right. So then you watch European football, you you see players it happens daily. Yeah. So you have to tell yourself, hey, I'm not just a statistic, I'm going to go make a difference, mm. going to go touch the world. Yeah. And that is important, but I think that comes from your own belief system, mm-hmm. your own confidence yeah. in yourself. And you need to also drive that. You need to make sure you drive that. But you mentioned something, I just want to speak to some mill grassroots. Um, your opinion, do you think it's easy for our young people? Do you, do you, like challenges. Um, what is the challenges that our young people are facing? I think um, from the experience that we've had and engaging with a lot of players and also obviously being football people, um, the challenges are vast. I think especially nowadays when we have a society, we have technology is key. I think when we were younger with playing, I mean, I remember you used to play six days a week. Uh, the seventh day was just because you weren't allowed to play. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, and I think nowadays there's so many distractions within our youth with regards to technology and also influence. And um, I mean, many of us that grew up before, we've always had a lot of friends around us and our friends was always the football people we were with. Our friends was our coaches, the managers, the first team manager, because that's where you wanted to be. But I think nowadays uh, with youngsters, friends are online. Uh, You don't know what influencers are there. And unfortunately, a lot of times in local football, there aren't always honest people. That's true. And um, especially when you have a talent, a lot of people are looking at what they can get from you. Mm -hmm. But obviously that's that's there and that's one of the dangers. That's one of the challenges. Obviously there are people that are good people. They look after you. They see the talent. They want to enhance it. They want you to grow. But in terms of challenges for local footballers, I think it's vast. It's vast. We can go social, <laughs> economic. Um, mm. You can go everywhere. Like Kurt yeah. said, very important family. Mm. If you look at nowadays, the people that succeed is mostly people with a good family uh, right. behind them. Mm. Boys, because talent is something you've got to put into action. You can be the most talented person, but that doesn't mean you're always going to be in the first team. I think like Tariq will attest to, you've got to work hard, mm. train more than once a day five times a, a week, you got to travel. It's a lot of sacrifice. And if you don't have that behind you in terms of family uh, support, um, then it's difficult because it's easy to give up. It's easier yeah. to give up than to carry on. That's right. Um, so yeah, yeah, you can go on and on, but challenges yeah. so far. We're going to come yeah. back to you now because you mentioned some very interesting things that I want to talk about. Challenges, different types of challenges. I think social ills is one of our biggest um, challenges, but we're going to come back to that now. And especially what you've also mentioned about family. Family is important. Mm. You will many times see in, in your coach and you guys have maybe witnessed this. You have a talented boy at the soccer field, but there's no parents, there's no support for that boy. And he gives up because mommy worry me or my name. You know? So maybe we can come back to that and also why our people need to be um, you know, interested in their children's development. I just want to read out the uh, WhatsApp number. You guys can send us a WhatsApp on 078 906 0543. 078 906 0543. I've got uh, the soccer guys with me in the studio, and we're going to talk about, not soccer, sorry, football. The football guys, <laughs> we're going to talk about football, and we're also going to play, can we play that? Yeah. Okay, I just want to show you guys who quite aesthetic. <laughs> 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 okay, so we're going to play that. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, and 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 um, Tari, how did scouting start for you? Because you played, right? You played. You said you mentioned you played in South River somewhere. 
But then all of a sudden, people started seeing the talent in you. But obviously, there was somebody that, 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 that saw the real talent and took you to the next level. How's that journey been, been for you? Because that's, that's a clump ta- and the and Delphin, and the Menenberg, as a clump ta- and they're all asking the question. Because many times I did an interview a few months ago with Nasif Morris, Morris, and the young people would ask me, but ask Nasif, where did things start for him? Just to give us a guideline. Where do we play? Where do we start? Just, just you know, put of yourself in, I mean, in, um, in that factor. Okay, so uh, at the time, Salt River Blackpool, they, they had a, uh, what's this? Quasily. ABC. Said, yeah, mm-hmm. ABC, I don't know what it's <laughs> called now. <laughs> that time we called it Quasily. And then we, uh, Ajax, they had a, uh, which is now Cape Town Spurs, they had a uh, Quasily. And we played against him and I got scouted. Mm-hmm. And then they invited me to come join them. And then I impressed the coaches and... Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, Ajax uh, taught you what uh, mm. most like local coaches uh, they can maybe just teach you the basics of the game and stuff. And with Ajax, uh, went more in detail with stuff, and it was something new to me. And started getting used to it. Mm. Played there uh, from under seventeen or fifteen till mm. till I um, uh, reached the first team. Mm. I was training. Uh, like a trial training, you know, you come from the, the Vodacom team and the mm. next step is the first team. Yeah. And then I managed to uh, sign a contract. Uh, I was there for one season and then I went on loan. Uh, Milan, yeah, Milano. Milan. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I went to Milano, I went on loan there and I managed to... Awesome. to Get a lot of game time in mm. the one season. Uh, we managed to reach the playoffs for the the PSL. Unfortunately, we fell short. Uh, mm. So yeah, and then my my loan deal came to in the night to return back to Ajax. Okay. And then I just felt like when I got that Ajax, like I think maybe it's time for for mm. me to speak with the coach or whatever and tell him like because when I was at Milan, it felt like they saw more of my worth and. Yeah. You know, as a youngster, you want to mm. play. You Mm-mm. you don't just want to be training. Yeah. We, you know, uh, which uh, I didn't understand that mm. time because uh, you have to be patient. Uh, mm. You have to wait your turns. You can't just harass him to things. Uh, you don't know if it can can go right or wrong. Yeah. So I was a bit uh, in a rush to play, but I think that uh, that uh, move actually worked uh, well out for me. Um, so yeah, I managed to. Uh, um, uh, have an agreement with the club uh, for for Milano to buy me a uh, right out, mm-hmm. and then I played for three three seasons. And then scouts uh, scouted me. They messaged me of Cape Town City, okay. where, where I'm at now, and, and they invited me. And the the, the chairman called me, told me, um, uh, we have uh, something exciting going because uh, we're going to sign Penny McCarthy as a nice the head coach and whatever. And mm-hmm. when when everyone arrives, then everyone is on the on a clean slate, like it's now off, you have to start. And so it was like everyone has to now impress the new coach. And mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I impressed the coach. Mm-hmm. And what can I say now? Like the <laughs> rest is history. <laughs> 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 but but it, it wasn't easy. And obviously, you had to stay focused, you had to stay motivated because at the end of the day, you could have said, No, man, this is not for me. Let me get a job, a nine to five job. So if it, by your funny, and, and I'm sorry to say this, by your funny, funny soccer players are they getting call center after now, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it, but but but, but I think also it's the aftermath, man, um, after soccer. What happens after soccer? And I think that is where we want to come back to. Um, I read an article recently about a gentleman who uh, played in 2013 last, and he went bankrupt. You know, um, there wasn't. Uh, you know, somebody to, to help him. And that is what we spoke about earlier on. But I just want to talk more on the fact to you about young boys um, coming to the soccer field. Also, before we go to the young boys, how is the interest of our young ladies? Do we have a lot of young female players? Has it, in, has, has it improved um, over the last few years? Yes, it has. Uh, ladies football has taken taking a new leaf and you look at it, the banana banana mm. is doing well and, and it started grassroots level, the quality has improved mm. tremendously, the quality is very high. Yeah. Um, you look at the engine tournament also involving the under 18 ladies section, 
which is big because then you can see Cape Town Roses, mm-hmm. you see Cape Town Spurs, you see, so you see a lot of Spurs ladies, so a lot of good quality is coming through and they're all wanting to play in the big tournaments. Yeah. And it also helps because Baniana Baniana is doing very, very well. So the quality of, of football, you look at Sundowns going to go in in the CAF, mm-hmm. the Ladies CAF Champions mm-hmm. League. So the ladies football is the forefront at the moment. If you look at wow. it, the men is trying to chase yeah. chase down the ladies <laughs> yeah. because of the success that our ladies team is having. And, and that is taking effect in the grassroots mm-hmm. level as well because now many ladies are seeing, hey, there's opportunity here. Mm-hmm. And and I can take it, and yeah. you can see the passion about the ladies, which is very good. Mm-mm. And I think because it's it's still growing, uh, the, the 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 female soccer. Um, okay, it is there, but it has been there. But I think it's there's a time now where it's actually growing, where females also feel that they want to prove themselves, which there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but is there any challenges that prevents them? You know, uh, I, I don't think we have a lot of, of of clubs. You know that actually still accommodating to to females is that something that still needs to actually grow as well i think yes in terms of also the de- the development of of first you need quality coaching Mm-mm. to take place you need you can't just have anybody coaching you need good quality coaches yeah. um that is i think firstly and then you need to look at the involving more ladies in your in the community teams yeah. And then you have to first look at the structure of your clubs. Can you, how are you going to accommodate and how are you going to sort out mm-hmm. having extra ladies as well in your team? And, and, that, yeah. and that's important. Yeah. And I think that is where many clubs, if you look at now, a lot of PSL clubs mm-hmm. are going, they're also buying a ladies team. Yeah. So there's more opportunity now because now the structure is already in place from the top. And, and that is important, what our local clubs can do and, yeah. and strive to be like in terms of getting that right and then developing good lady teams mm-hmm. as well so that that can suit into your club philosophy mm-hmm. or your club ethos, mm-hmm. which is very important. And, and that actually brings me to Desiree Ellis. I think it was last year when she won an award, she did very well for herself. A young, not, I can't say young anymore, a lady from Nova Park. Um, no. Young, young, young and old, yeah, young and old. <laughs> I'm a lady from a Nova Park that is doing very well. That is, you know, I look at the sponsorship that also grew. And I think she, she actually comes from, she comes from Bafana Bafana, from, from Bihana Bihana. Yeah. And I think what, what makes her, especially she knows the, the structure, she knows the setup. And, and that makes her, any person that knows the structure can actually compete, you know. So, so that brings me to the following question, where we left off earlier on the social ills. And, and we can't touch on everything, but I always talk about the socials because this is Cape Flat stories. This is, we, we need to also realize we're wrong. We as parents or as, as a community also need to, to, you know, to step up and say, okay, we need to fix things. Do you think that a youngster would do much better if his parents support him? As mentioned earlier on, um, family is important. Um, I think that is the... That is what we must, that, that is what we, what parents need to understand. Yes, you have the next Benny McCarthy. Yes, you have the next Tariq Phillips. But do parents fulfill that role as, 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 the, as the mentor? Not only on the field. May, maybe the mother and father don't know nothing about soccer. But at home, that mental conditioning. Yeah, I think that's, that's difficult because if you look at, especially... Um, and a lot of the talented players, um, you have a household where, um, you know, the income stream within that household is low. Both parents have to work. It's not, it's, you must remember, it's not by, uh, by want that mm. there's neglect to children. I'm not saying parents are neglecting children, but that support that we're talking about. Parents, both parents are forced to go and work. Yeah. So, like, w- what do you do? So, there's always extended family, auntie and uncles and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's um, ultimately you talk about social ills. It makes it worse when the parents themselves obviously aren't disciplined with um, not being disciplined with regards to alcohol, Mm -hmm. drugs, and so on. Obviously, then it's a problem because Mm -hmm. then you get child neglect. And that's not a football problem. Uh, That's not a problem any coach can fix, no matter how good you are. Mm -hmm. That is a a community problem. And um, I think. Look, like we engage a lot, obviously, with community clubs. We, we try to help community clubs, and we engage with a lot of coaches. Mm. And, um, and you find a lot of coaches can make a difference. And that's why we focus a lot of our work on coaches, because you work with one coach, but he's working with 20 kids. Mm. So indirectly, you're influencing 20 kids. Yeah. So, and I think the coaches with a 
good intention, um, with good, um, obviously, understanding of what's happening at the household of the kids. They are, most of the time, uh, the father, <laughs> the yeah. uncle, the, yeah. the social worker, yeah. everything like that. So, it's look, I can't judge any parent. At the end of the day, um, yeah. you know, everybody comes from a different household, True. got a different perspective. But I think, yes, if there was more attention to um, players or boys yeah. and girls, um, then, yeah, obviously it would, would put us on a better footing. And then also, um, a lot of parents, maybe if they have a, a young uh, Tariq Felix or whatever, that they also maybe equip them to understand yeah. what is actually involved in football. When that guy comes knocking on your door, is he there for your son yeah. or your daughter, or is he there for another reason? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is the reality that we deal with mm -hmm. as an NPO. We, we get a lot of um, boys that have, uh, are left by agents, yeah. no longer signed because yeah. they passed their sell by date. Mm -hmm. um, they're only 18, yeah. but they're no longer performing the... Mm -hmm what they what they're there for and we try to pick them up and motivate them and also unfortunately late in their lives but we make them realize that education is important yeah. getting a job is important and and that's amazing that what the npo is doing because we have a lot there's hundreds of cases like that mm. where the boy didn't perform in the last three four matches and now they've been um x and now they must leave the problem is there's many of these people are doing more damage because you're giving that boy hope but you're only there like you mentioned now it's not really there for the boy. It's there for a pay slip. It's there for a, a paycheck. So, so we also need to be honest. How do we educate our people, our parents? Because by a mass, my can feel quite soccer, mm. but we don't know the, 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 the <laughs> we don't know the <laughs> details of it. We, a little bit, I spoke quite soccer. I can, uh, you know, a backflip to what look But mm. the thing is this: when that child gets into the wrong hands, there's many guys out there that was famous at one stage and then they end up bankrupt because mm. the manager stole all the money. How do we warn families about that, mothers about that? I think it's awareness. You mm. must just be aware. Mm. It's, at the end of the day, a parent is a parent. So if you go to a club like, we've got Grossi Park here. Yeah? Yeah. Grossi Park, I've been involved with Grossi Park. Mm. They're down the road. They are. They serve the community with regards to grassroot football and they also yeah. have a, call it a semi-pro side mm -hmm. or whatever. You go and you meet the people. You find yeah. out who's there, who are the coaches. Yeah. Are they good people? Are, yeah. they, are they not? That's part of parenting. You're yeah. gonna know if it's a somebody that with ulterior motives and so on. It's awareness. Yeah. It's about reading. It's about because the mm -hmm. information is out there. True. It's just uh, doing the work to actually go yeah. find out. But it comes back to where they need to be more involved. Oh, they definitely. need to be yes, more involved. First prize, yeah. I agree with you, Tariq. What was your best moment on the field? Um, you know, I was a little a goalscope of we we all did something. What was your best match where you can say, you know, this far this is the match that I really enjoyed? If it been Makati was most to experience in the Mabia, that five goals or that four goals in nineteen ninety nine. Was it nineteen ninety nine? I think I had a few decent games, yeah. but probably the one that stands out for me is I think. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of games. But also, what keeps you going? I, I mean, it was no pause. I was in. I always talk to to Muslim, to Muslim sports people. My one friend is Vida. Uh, he's an MMA coach. During this time, it was difficult because you you know it, it is not only fasting, physical, but also it's a, it, it's a spiritual thing. How has this month of Ramadan been for you as, um, as a sports person? Because we very seldom talk about it, the challenges. You have to play much harder because you are fasting now. And also you have to say, say can any mensen say, you know, just being here for the mensen. You must not push. You can't say anything in the Ramadan. But how has this month been for you? You know, um, aside from all the challenges, I mean, it was rewarding the end of the day. But how has this month been for you playing? I think uh, growing up, if you come out of a home that... Uh it's like installed in you, like mm. and it becomes like a habit, and mm. uh, you would just get used to it. And as you grow, you become used to it. So, mm. uh, for me, I can say that I, while I play, I don't really feel it because okay. I'm already used to mm -hmm. how how yeah. it's gonna feel and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's also over the years because yeah, it, over it, the years. from young already you yeah. you got used to this, yes. um, you know, doing doing this, you know, and 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 also, you know. As a Muslim player, 
Do you feel there's also a lot of challenges and we might have to talk about this because there is there's, there is not a lot of Muslim soccer players. Um, do you think it is challenging? And we have got a lot of good Muslim players. Um, we I feel that we're not there's not a lot of our youngsters out there that is really um, coming out to come and play. I don't know if it has grown over the years, but I feel that we have that is an area maybe where we need to maybe develop because we have got I mean, you, Nasif Morris, um, and, and a lot of other guys. Um, and I think we have a lot of good soccer players amongst our Muslim brothers. Yeah, no, that's true. I have to agree with you. But at the end of the day, it's more about what does the player want? Mm. What choices is the player making? Uh, you, because I know a lot of good players, they rather prefer to go into the uh, more into the religion and yeah. stuff and yeah. finish that and to do sport. and. Yeah. Okay, they can be very good players, but yeah. uh, most of them that I know of, they mm. they prefer the religion. Awesome. So that's the difference. There's a difference. There was a young girl, I think she's still playing for, for Banyana Banyana, Nabila. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of her. She played um, three years ago and I met her and she plays amazing. She plays amazing. And I was so proud of her because, you know, we need more of our young Muslim ladies, you know. Not that I want to bring religion in, but I feel that we have talent amongst our brothers and sisters, you know. So that is why I just wanted to touch on it. But I want to just go over to the young man over here. He's not a throat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to you on your on the win, on bail. Um, how was that for you? You had a good man gespeel. You had a good man gespeel. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to win it. I'm going to win it. Because they proved themselves. <laughs> so, I think if you ask me now, I'm still amazed. Mm -hmm. um, I said on Sunday in church, I said, the script was written. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was written for us because we started off very slowly. Mm -hmm. First two games, you, you always say, win the first game, it's important. Win the first game, it's important. And then we got a draw. Second game, again a draw. And we thought, hey, something's going wrong here. We're not yeah. clicking. We're not yeah. challenging. Yeah. But the team, and I, and, I, and I say again, from when it started, the preparation was good. The entire technical team yeah. got it right. In terms of, yes, we battled at the start, but building up to a bowl, it's huge. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the magnitude of the tournament once you're there. And, and the technical team, was very good mm -hmm. in terms of, as well as the support from the top, mm -hmm. from the senior managers, that was, they gave everything they could mm -hmm. to make the weekend, we didn't say win it, but to go make it memorable for, for the players. Yeah. And as the entire technical team sat there, had meetings continuously, then we obviously picked a group of players that we thought they, they can go do battle for us. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, I think two weeks before I had an interview with Coach Shamil mm -mm. <laughs> and I said, let's hope we'll be there the Monday. But mm -mm. we just made a joke about it because obviously you don't, you know what you're up against, you know yeah. the quality what you're up against. And we went into it after the first two games of draws, the last game we grinded out the result. And, and that probably set our tournament. We were like, mm -hmm. hey, here we arrived now. Back into a round 16 where you're probably hoping, you're looking at Cape Town Spurs, they're flying, you're looking at Stellenbosch, they're flying. Mm. You have a no name, you, you're coming out, Crossy Park <laughs> United, you're going about your business quietly. Mm. And as the technical team, they just said, let's just avoid Spurs. We literally all said, let's avoid Spurs. Let's not get them, let's avoid Spurs. Mm. And then the round 16 game came and we, we got Charles Oane and, and we, we played well, but not to our ability. Mm. And I think as the team, we were getting results, but we didn't know how we were actually getting it. And the team was just grinding out mm -mm. momentum and looking for momentum. Mm -mm. And if you tell me, if you ask me now what changed, I'd probably say it was this game, the quarterfinal. Mm. It had everything you wanted. We were one all down with three minutes to go. Mm -mm. And I probably lay at night and I watched this game over and over and it plays in my head. Mm -mm. And we one all down with three minutes to go and you can just see hey, we're looking dejected, the bench was looking dejected <laughs> and they're arguing and they're yeah. going because obviously everybody's invested now. We're mm -hmm. like, hey, we're going out here, it looks, looks gloomy. Mm -hmm. And then we made some switch that, I don't know if you call it genius or you mm -hmm. call it luck, but there was a moment that we said, hey, let's change the formation, let's change it tactically. We went three at the back, threw in another, moved one of our left backs into a striking role. Mm -hmm. 
added another body up front like mm. Kashi City do it with Tari Kosa or something <laughs> they add Felix into the mix so we thought I thought hey, let's take a gamble and move us, uh, a defender into into attacking position and one fell away one chance fell away and it, and we scored mm. and that was literally with two minutes to go mm. and I think that gave us everything that the weekend whatever came afterwards it came from that game the belief changed went into extra time against Selenik again we we looked good we looked comfortable we looked confident and then we scored the second one in in extra time I think mm. early in extra time and I think that set our tournament alight that set our weekend yeah. alight it, it brought a fire amongst mm-hmm. the boys and yet if you asked them on Monday in the cloakroom at Athlone Stadium do you believe we can win they probably thought no <laughs> not against Cape Town Spurs because if you look at it the Sunday we beat Super sport. Mm-mm. Again, I'll tell you again, Mm-mm. it's the planning from Mm-mm. fitness wise, our technical yeah. team were good. And but this it, is a team from Grassy Park. From nobody knew us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you see, nobody gave us a chance. And, yeah. and, and literally, like I said, while the script was written, mm-hmm. it was, and I told Coach Shamil in our interview, I said, the owner believes we're the best. Wow. The owner believes we're going to win the bill. Mm-hmm. And deep in mind, if you ask me, I also think, hey, no ways. Mm-hmm. what we're up against it's, yeah. it's tough yeah. it's, it's, it's a huge task mm-hmm. and then we come out to warm up we beat Super Sport we go 1-0 and you, you see Cape Town City play mm-hmm. after us they beat um, Cape Town Spurs beat Cape Town mm-hmm. City yeah. and that was probably Cape Town Spurs' final they thought mm-hmm. now nah, we're playing Grossi Park no that's yeah. easy yeah, yeah. probably because I mean you, they knocked Stellenbosch out mm-hmm. they knocked Cape Town City out yeah. which is arguably their cup finals and then we came out in the cloakroom on Monday mm-hmm. and we sat in the cloakroom Athlone Stadium. Now you know the boys. Yeah. The first, the, probably the only time they're there they is watching when they see Phillies playing yeah. here okay, and City in Sundowns or, or whatever. And you know, and you and you sit there in the cloakroom, the atmosphere is absorbed and you can mm-hmm. see like hey. And I see gents, as the technical team, we just said, hey, believe, man. Yeah. Just go have belief. Mm-mm. I said, you came here this far, you have nothing to prove to anybody. You made yourselves proud. You outdone yourselves. You have nothing to prove to the world. Yeah. Just go and enjoy the experience. Go mm. and enjoy the game. And and the cloakroom, it was quiet. It was mm. like, hey, we're playing a game in 20 minutes. Yeah. The players look nervous. Because obviously, Cape Town Spurs, they're used to it. They played yeah. Bell Finals mm-hmm. before. Players is used to it. Mm-hmm. They won the tournament last year. So obviously, the task is big. Yeah. And as we come out, game started. And the so obviously now you're thinking Grassy Park. I still told them the technical team, don't worry, we'll have all the support. We are a local mm. team. They are <laughs> the academy. They yeah. have no support. Everybody <laughs> wants us to win. Because yeah. it's a fairy tale. Imagine yeah. Grassy Park winning at Athlone Stadium. Mm. It's huge. And everybody, I the entire ex said, No, you're gonna beat Spurs, you know, win the final. Mm-mm. The the Monday, we're like, hey, this is a huge task here, eight of us. And as we're sitting there and, and and as we're going in, the game starts and we score early. And, and mm-hmm. that was probably, tactically, we got it spot on the players. Mm-mm. They deserve all the credit. Because, wow. I mean, Athlone Stadium, the nerves, the Mm-mm. adrenaline, you're yeah. playing against a huge team. And, and the players did everything we asked. Tactically, mm-hmm. we were good. Mm-hmm. We were very good. We, we played. We didn't allow the midfield to get on the ball. Yeah. Um, we obviously analysed them to a T. And mm-hmm. they didn't analyse us, I can tell you now, because they didn't... Mm-hmm. They didn't care about Grassy Park. Mm. They just play their game with <laughs> Cape Town Spurs. They yeah. need to beat. And we analysed them to the T. Mm. And that worked for us. Our players, mm. the hearts, the desires. Yeah. And the first goal when we scored, the players couldn't, hey, it went in. Mm-mm. I don't know if you ask me now how we scored. I don't know. <laughs> I told the player the Monday, the Tuesday, I didn't know you scored the goal. Because <laughs> I just saw the net going. And I was like, what? We won or up? Mm. And I think the second goal set it up with of a pass caught the line high mm-hmm. of Spurs, played it in behind. Mm-hmm. We knew we would catch them once because mm-hmm. there was a bold out where there was three times that it was offside. So the one time that we were actually on, it worked and we scored the second goal. Mm-hmm. And as the second goal go, it went in, I'll never forget, it will always, Coach Ari, he sat, sat next to me, said, gee, was, what's going on here? <laughs> and I was like, hey, what's going on here? Because now the whole bench is like, what's happening here? Uh-uh. Because you two not up. Mm-mm. 
There's a lot to play here. It's, yes, and, and probably the stadium still be deep. Nah, man, Spurs have too much quality. They'll, yeah. they'll eventually yeah. come back. They'll eventually score again. And, mm-hmm. and, and technically, tactically, we were very good. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we went into halftime 2-0. And halftime, we said, boys, we can't concede early. Mm-hmm. Keep it tight. Don't drop deep. Keep playing a normal mm-hmm. game. Let's try and get the third goal. And it, it literally, as I'm speaking to you, it gives me goosebumps, mm-hmm. man, because if you are, like I said now, I still can't believe it. Yeah. It, it was written, the script was written. Was and, written. and as we went to, and then to you know, straight off the half time, we conceded very early. Mm-hmm. And the entire stadium went, Spurs, Spurs. <laughs> and we like, whoa, now we're up against it now, yeah. because the, we had a small section, we had a box, our Esco had a box in mm-hmm. Athlone Stadium, mm-hmm. they were proud, Crossy Park, Banner there, yeah. VIP section, <laughs> yeah. so we, we're looking the part, but we, we, we're feeling it on the field. Mm-hmm. And and the early goal probably, it made us nervous, mm-hmm. I think, and it made us more worried because we went deeper, mm-hmm. so our defensive line went deeper, and with 10 minutes to go, people still probably believe, mm-hmm. no, I suppose we'll get one. Yeah. And I, if I if I listen to the comment, if you listen to the commentary on the fourth moment page, towards the end, it's like it's goosebumps that they even felt at the end, man. Like the commentary was like, did Grassy Park just do it? Uh-uh. And with five minutes to go, you asked me that it probably felt like an hour sitting yeah. on that bench because <laughs> you're screaming and you don't yeah. know. And and in the last five minutes, the closer we went. Mm-mm. the more the crowd in our corner started believing and the yeah, chance yeah, GP yeah. GP <laughs> and then we were like hey Rossi Park can do it here yeah yeah and and, and and like you mentioned it is against a team that is they have they have teams within the team you know and he's the owner of what you know uncles but after we go so so you have a different ball game 100% and you look at it like uh, like I said before the tournament Mm-mm. you look at the exco Mm. Grassy Park X. It opened my eyes. It made me want to give, yeah. even though I wasn't playing, but it made me want to give everything mm. I could yeah. for the club. Because mm. as an ex to put your hands in your own mm. pocket to say, mm. boys, here's a tracksuit. Wow. And here you can see on the tracksuit logo, it says mm. uh, Tobin Vid Boys commercial. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the top, it says Tobin's mm. trucking. Wow. But it's, it's people that takes their own sacrifice, mm. their own mm. commitment to say, boys, yeah. Our kit that was transported yeah. from I don't know where, Vid yeah. Boy commercial, yeah. just to make sure the, <laughs> the boys looked the part. The part. And yes. and it wasn't and like I said, it wasn't to tell us that we'll go out there on mm-hmm. Monday and we'll go deliver. Mm-hmm. We'll go win the trophy. Just the, the and, fact that they believed in you. And just the belief that yeah. they had a, a transpired mm-hmm. into the players. Mm-hmm. And and as an ex going to say, hey boys, mm-hmm. you made us proud, man. Mm-hmm. Monday it was like just go show us off, go show Grossi Park yeah, off, go yeah. enjoy the moment. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll win, but go enjoy the moment. <laughs> it was literally that type yeah. of talk, go enjoy mm-hmm. it, the love your moment, it's a yeah. once-off game. As long as you don't mm-hmm. throw yourself away, go enjoy it, go yeah. love it. And whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. That was probably the mood. Mm-hmm. And 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 one of the boys made a, uh, they were like saying quotes before we went out to go play. And they said um, something about you never on top, or you always you always at the bottom. Mm-mm. But as the underdog, you always come out on top, or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And then we said like dare to dream, and mm-hmm. then we were just like pushing quotes out, yeah. and the players was like, and this was before the game. Mm-mm. And with five minutes to go, brought on changes, Mm-mm. defending our lives, and it was too deep. But but that was what what the boys, the sacrifices that they put in, and like you said, players yeah. fasted. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. On the Athlone Stadium, players went mm. into their beliefs, and mm. and and as the players, the belief grew. With two minutes to go, we probably still didn't believe we will win. Mm-mm. And when the final whistle went, normally you would see teams celebrate, yeah. Ole yeah. and Campione yeah. and going yeah. crazy. Our players fall to their feet, yeah. and they fall and yeah. they're crying, and they're, like you can see, yeah. they were crying and they were emotional yes. and. They didn't want to celebrate. It was yeah. like they couldn't believe it. Mm. It was like, what did we just do? Yeah. And and yeah. and that was important. Like, what did and now you only reflecting now on the bail that you actually think, yo, what you went to go achieve was huge. It's big. Because it's big. up against all odds, like you said, yeah. we come 
we only have 10 balls, we share. <laughs> Three teams share 10 balls. <laughs> but that is what we, and that yeah. is like the commitment that mm. we did. And, and mm. you know, you, you put sacrifice into it. Mm-mm. And then you go out there and you go achieve something that is huge against right. Or odds PSL teams. And as man, what you have to do? So you drop, and you, you have some Vodacom players that Cape Town Spurs plays the whole Vodacom yeah, team in yeah. a bowl tournament. Yeah. Yes, we have about four that plays Mutsepe and mm. eight. It doesn't, there was 11, the first bowl tournament. Yeah. So imagine 11 players at the first bowl tournament and they wow. go to win it. Wow. So imagine the stories they will tell the kids. Mm. Imagine the stories, the heroes that they are. Mm-mm. To Grossi Park, to our development yes, kids, to yes. under nines, to under twelve, mm-hmm. to and that is important. If mm-hmm. you look at now what Grossi Park, your name is big. Yeah. Because if you look at a club, what else can you go and achieve? Yeah. You must go win the NFD, you must mm-hmm. go win the mm-hmm. NFD next season. Mm-hmm. So automatically the pressure that as a club that comes with it. Now you have to look at your club and say, how do we make this club a big club mm-hmm. now? Because what you want to achieve is huge. It's huge. So, so mm-hmm. in terms of, and like I said, hats mm-hmm. off to, to everybody involved mm-hmm. at Grassy Park. Mm-hmm. And I always say this, it's it's big for us as players and for coaching staff, yeah. but for people who's invested years into mm-hmm. the club. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Crusaders, you yeah. mentioned the name change to yeah. Grassy Park. Yeah. These people who's invested everything yeah. into this club. And I still remember and some of the uncles because one of the uncles stayed next to us who still started Mr. Naidu. Um, so and so, so, so pa, Mr. Naidu, but Mr. Manu passed away. Yeah. And Mr. Naidu had always been so good to sit with me and talk to me about the game. But he was, he was my neighbor. And, and, and it's guys like that, even on the other side, also, there was also uncles. There's a lot of uncles in Terrasi Park. Those that years had played a big role. And we have to actually applaud him. Because if it wasn't for them, this yeah, moment, you know, so, so, so you will be the uncle. In a few years' time, you will be the uncle. <laughs> 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 Are we going to choose something exactly? Yes.